Hello everyone, my name is Sierra. I do art and I run a tea meditation circle here in Auckland, New Zealand. Today in this video, I want to share with you how did I start to meditate and how my practice has evolved over time over the last 10 years. So I came to New Zealand to do my Master of Architecture degree here. I came here by myself so I felt very lonely and unhappy. Actually I felt unhappy most of my childhood growing up. Never have a stable home life. My parents always arguing and fighting sometimes very physically and uh, always really scary to me. So I thought that I am just a not a happy person and I won't be able to find happiness because I did not believe in true love anyway. I didn't see it with my parents. My auntie also divorced when she had her uh, second child. So I have a lot of examples of unhappy couples around me and I uh, was really confused about how unconditional love or how true love could be. So I went to New Zealand and hard to make friends when uh, my English was pretty much at a beginner level then. Um, I came across this flyer about a meditation class on my campus and on the flyer it say, whenever you go, carry happiness with you. That sentence, that quote really strike me. How could I carry something that I do not have? So I went to the meditation class with curiosity of how can I be happy? How can I sustain my happiness? So uh, yeah, the class was good. I learned how to meditate, close eyes and then even open eyes to gaze on a candle flame or a flower or a picture frame of then I didn't know it was a picture of the spiritual master. Now that they wasn't just teaching meditation, they was actually a spiritual path. Um, so to joy, I have to follow a few rules of to being able to meditate twice per day at least, and then uh, twice per week with the whole group. And that was easy. Then another rule is to be a vegetarian um, and not consuming alcohol and that was super easy for me anyway. I was already a vegetarian back then and I rarely touch alcohol at all. So that was super easy. And then the last one is practicing celibacy, not having a sexual or romantic relationship. And I was also cool with that. I didn't have a boyfriend by the time. So I joined the group and learned to meditate. In our group, it was Bhakti Yoga, which is devotional love. So we meditate on our heart center and we will fix our gaze, half eyes open and look at the picture frame of our guru, the spiritual master and um, invoke the feeling of, of love and compassion toward our spiritual master and also receiving from him. So we just open ourselves up as a channel for love to flowing through in and out. I was being in the path for three and a half years, almost four years. It was a lot of rituals that we were doing. Uh, most of them are tied to Indian culture because my spiritual master Sri Chinmoy is from India. Nowadays, it, it, was, um, it is Bengali, but um, that is from his tradition. In my last year with the spiritual path, I felt very much um, disconnected to my spiritual master, to the uh, community, because I think I just outgrow a lot of things and I didn't understand why I have to follow this ritual when just I just felt it's very materialistic in a way. It clearly was a sign that my devotion to the path to my guru is uh, descending because 
it was always like that they always having big ceremony and things and being very generous with food and offering and you know wearing really beautiful sari and buying things here and there but because my devotion was stronger then so I didn't see it as a problem anyway the last year was a struggle for me I felt very disconnected and at the same time while I was on the path I was disconnected from my creativity which is doing art and doing just doing my own thing and have a lot of time for myself in the end, I was also living with another student of Sri Chinmoy uh, at that time. The experience made me realize that I'm out of balance in a way of not having love and compassion for myself and pour uh, from an empty cup. So that is how I felt then. I then I finally moved out of the path being out in the world again was also another struggle. So um, although there was a huge gap for me, I felt the disconnection is still there. And now I understand that it wasn't about too much about not being able to connect or belong to this or that group. It's more like the connection within myself. So um, I look into that and started to heal that to kind of like connect to myself again and the way I was doing it is through cre creativity through my art which is always there which is always a huge part of me that I was neglected for a while while I was um, discovering this path of meditation and ritual and you know uh, all of this bhakti yoga and devotion for God for the supreme for um, actually the external God that outside of me that was my misunderstanding of the path for quite a while when I'm out of my spiritual path I no longer keep my guru picture to meditate on and I no longer draw that love and compassion out to towards him anymore so I was very lost about meditation I didn't feel very deep uh, of a connection when I just sit and breathe so that how actually I was disconnected to my own body or to my own soul I couldn't even meditate it just on my breath I was like looking out for an external kind of figure of a guru of this saint or that saint to be able to to meditate to so I have to restructure my whole practice the practice I was doing for that three and a half four year was out to the window and the way I started to meditate again at first was just trying to reconnect to my breath and just that nothing else I didn't even go to my heart center at that point it was just about being in the now, being in the moment, connect to my breath and being in my body in that way. And slowly, slowly, I am I was able to open up my heart again and I felt safe again to go to my heart and and know that, you know, that is the love and connection that coming from within. And I came across a Catholic teaching for the second time when I was in my spiritual path I had pick up his book but it didn't click then because I was still having my guru in the back of my head and um, feeling like oh I just want to devote my practice and everything to my guru and I didn't want to read anything else from other authors or from other thought leaders which was so naive I now looking back it was bizarre how I kind of like putting myself in a box like that and never just accept everything blindly is pretty much blind faith or blind devotion um, and realizing that that blind devotion is very much additional love so like I love him so he can give me protection with his 
mystical power or his extraordinary power and stuff like that so um, yeah that was quite bizarre anyway yeah I was really into the teaching of Eckhart Tolle and then Michael Singer and then Ram Dass so I had to say that the three teachers that have the most influence on me um, for the last 10 years is Eckhart Tolle, Michael Singer and Ram Dass wasn't my spiritual guru at all um, when I look back at his teaching actually I realized that it was just all my blind faith because his teaching only talk about love for God and was and I was no longer um, having that like external God as a uh, use to to reach my spiritual height anyway God for me now is all within and um, I have formed a different relationship with God uh, with the Supreme nowadays than then I, when I was in my early 20s and in the spiritual path so it's very interesting and maybe about a year ago I started to look into embodiment practice in way of movements or dance was just being on my own at home haven't been to a somatic dance or a static dance or anything like that before um, until very recently but I have formed a um, very fun and uh, no structure very spontaneous embodiment practice where I can drop into a different part of my body or sometimes walking from my head to my toe uh, with different fun movements sometimes with music sometimes with no music at all and um, to be able to release any block energies in my body and to be able to liberate and keep my heart open so I feel more connected to the world then Another thing recently that have helped me to evolve or develop my practice is going to a 10-day Vipassana silent uh, meditation course. That was my first time and the experience is very much unique and uh, transformative in so many ways. I have to say that the, the technique of vipassana is so particular and requires so much concentration to follow through for one hour and there are a lot of time when I felt like my, my concentration is going fatigue and I could not concentrate anymore um, but the result, I think the result is pretty significant, it's good it's just that it's so much concentration I, I felt it's really a masculine practice masculine energy when you uh, kind of like control the practice to a perfect um, level as he as Goenka the teacher of uh, Vipassana was saying perfect um, and I, I have the thing with the word perfect I know that I don't want to attach to any word what he mean about perfection a probably just an intention not to the way of like you have to do exactly yet you know or if you're not following through your failure is not like that but when I hear the word perfect um, my brain does given up anyway the practice had opening up so many different things that I that was hidden in my subconsciousness so a lot of things was was coming out when I was in the 10 day silent retreat and that was really intense that was probably the most intense 10 days retreat that I have ever done in my whole life silence part is actually really fun and easy I really enjoy that because if we don't uh, keep it silent if we're still chit chatting with other students while doing that such particular meditation technique I think it's gonna be way harder because 
there will be so much comparison between experience and we wouldn't able to have the, the quiet mind to go into the practice. So actually, my mind was really quiet to start the practice, but then to be able to sit and concentrate and flow through, like scanning my body, he called it sweeping, and sensing different sensation bit by bit um, of all the body from head to toe and the toe to head. It was really intense and a lot of things came out even um, yeah so the silent part was actually really good and so after the 10 day silent retreat I felt like yeah I definitely keep my practice of just focusing on the breath to start with so recently my practice has been one hour at least in the morning and a little less in the evening so my morning practice will be start with pranayama breath control exercise it's helped me to be drop into my body and to be really grounded just really help the body to relax and get into the now a lot easier and then from then flow into just observing my breath breath awareness just observing it and really just stay there for a long time probably like 45 minutes or so and then the last 15 minutes sometime i extended it to half an hour is chanting mantra um, with my beats and it's so fun as well when we can bring the vibration the sensation vibrating through the whole body we're chanting for at least 15 minutes long it's really impactful and amazing the body just soak up all of that wisdom and all of that beautiful high vibration and just you know just lock it into this body to prepare for the whole day of work and mingling going out and connecting doing this and that outside so after my meditation practice, I love reading. I usually read Ram Das or Eckhart Tolle or Michael Singer. Then I also listening to some of their podcast or some of the audio that I have been purchasing, especially from Eckhart Tolle. I love doing that so much, just listening to their teaching every single day. Definitely will help me so much to keep my heart open and keep myself being grounded and be present um, throughout the day to whatever I'm doing. Yeah, so that is pretty much my morning practice. My evening practice is, is a lot more simpler. Sometimes I do a lot less, sometimes I do a lot more, but I try to always read before bed. Is become me and my partner kind of like um, before bed routine we always get in bed and read for at least 15 minutes he reads his book I read my book and then we fall into sleep together um, so it's just pretty much my practice nowadays and I think it's gonna keep evolving as I'm gonna keep evolving and learning different things about myself learning different techniques different practices that work with a different version of me on the way of my evolution. and so thank you so much for listening watching this video I will see you in the next video bye